I'm Meg Benson Quinn, Vice President, Director of Sales and Marketing at Charles Bridge. And I'm so excited to be joined by Alyssa Mito Pusey, executive editor here at Charles Bridge and author illustrator, Grace Lynn, who needs no introduction. But you ladies, I'm thank you for joining us to talk about the two newest board book releases in the acclaimed storytelling math series, Our Favorite Apples and Who Jumps More. All right, so right off the bat, I'm gonna confess, I love storytelling math as both a reader and as a mom of an almost three-year-old. So. I don't know about you all, but when I was a student back in preschool and elementary school, it was kind of this unwritten and implied rule that you could either be a reader or a math kid, but you couldn't be both. And I love that Storytelling Math series celebrates diversity, math, the power of storytelling, and the fact that kids who love books are already amazing mathematical thinkers. So Alyssa, can you tell us a little bit about how we got storytelling math to the Charles Bridge list? Absolutely, Meg. So Marlene Kleiman, who works over at Turk, it's a nonprofit STEM organization, has read a ton of mathematical books for kids. And she had this vision for like a different type of math book. So she really wanted to bring in diversity and math, important age appropriate math concepts that went beyond counting and shapes. And so she brought this idea of diverse math books with great stories to Charles Bridge. And she, she said, what do you think? And we said, yes, please, this is amazing. And then we reached out to authors that we knew, like Grace, and we said, hey, Grace, what do you think about this idea for board books? My first reaction was like math books, because uh, I didn't really have a lot of great memories of math in my childhood either. She, she mentioned it and I was like, do you mean shapes and numbers? Mm -hmm. And uh, she immediately, when I said shapes and numbers, she like almost like jumped like, no, 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 we do not mean <laughs> shapes and numbers. And I was like, okay, then what do you mean? You said math books. And she's like, this is a whole new concept of math books that we're trying to create. We are trying to show kids how math is in our everyday lives. It's beyond shapes. It's beyond it's beyond numbers. I it's this concept <laughs> that we use every day. And uh, when Alyssa said that, um, not only did it kind of broaden my ideas of what a math book could be, but it kind of like rang this bell in my head. Because uh, for anyone who knows my books, you know that um, I've been a very strong proponent for diverse books for a very, very long time. And one of the hills that I think uh, diverse books have had to climb uh, is the fact that uh, most of the time, uh, they'll bring an Asian book out at Lunar New Year, and that'll be the only time. Or they'll bring Black books out at a Black History Month, and that'll be the only time. Uh, whereas I feel, and I think this is a feeling that's shared by many people, that um, diverse books are for every day, <laughs> like our everyday lives, because um, we marginalized people are marginalized every day. And so when Alyssa said, oh, we're trying to show how math is in our everyday lives, I was like, oh, that's what I'm trying to do with diversity. I'm trying to show how diversity is in our everyday lives. And that's when I was like, okay, okay, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. And so we have two tracks with the Storytelling Math series. And can you believe, by the way, that these two are seven and eight for you all? So we're at book seven and eight. Tell me a little bit about our characters, you guys. Who, does, who do these books represent and who are our favorite new friends? Uh, the characters of these books, they're, uh, they're all the, they're the same three characters. There's May, that's very much based on my own daughter when she was around three or four years old. Now she's a tween, so she will not admit that that's her. <laughs> <laughs> and also her good friend, um, whose real name is Maddie, but her favorite name is Olivia. So she wanted to be called Olivia in these books. And then another friend um, of, of theirs uh, named Hugo. And so basically these are based on real, my daughter and her real friends. So Grace, we've got our three friends. You wanna tell me a little bit more about what they do and our favorite apples and who jumps more? The whole concept of storytelling math is to show how math is in kids' everyday lives. So it was really important to me to just show kids doing uh, everyday things. So I was looking very closely at all the things that my kid did with her friends and the everyday things they would do and see what I could 
take from that to make into books. So for example, our favorite apples, uh, one of the things we live in New England, one of the things that we do is we go apple picking. It was like just a very easy storyline to like, look, they're going to have them pick apples together. Like I said, New England, there's a lot of snow. (laughs) So they always play together in the snow. And so just trying to find examples of how you could see the math in things that kids do every day. So Alyssa, we've got these great everyday concepts and I'm with you, Grace, apple picking and playing in the snow. Amazing for New England. How do we pair that with math? What concepts did we come to for these two books? So for our favorite apples, well, the kids pick apples and they've got red apples and yellow apples and green apples, and then they sort them by color. So they each have their favorite apple, but then they find these three apples that are all three colors. So what do they do? And so with that, the math, the math gets a little more complicated, right? Now, now you have to realize, okay, well, do we make another category? Like, what, what do we do? So there's creative problem solving. I love really. that sorting and classifying too, and that problem yeah. solving that's so perfect for this age level. Because I mean, you really do have very literal thinkers in two and three year olds, especially, right? And when you pose a problem to them, as in, you have these apples that were green, that were red. Now, what do we do with these? They do stop and think, and they are going to make a decision. So we're talking about sorting and classifying. Then what are we going to do with who jumps more? Well, it's about measurement and proportion because May takes these giant big leaps like a deer. And Olivia takes these little jumps like a bunny. And they're like, let's jump to that tree. Who's And they, so they do. And then they look back at their footprints and they notice there's a difference in their footprints. So then they say, well, who jumped more? All right, so that, that's really talking about math and language. Mm-hmm. Well, I love that too, because you're trying to teach even on a basic language understanding level too, that different words have multiple meanings, right? Or different interpretations. And so you're having that conversation and you're allowing kids to express what they think something is and also allow them to see somebody else's opinion. Who is jumping more? What does that mean? asking those questions rather than just didactically to go back to what Grace was saying, showing through shape books and number books, which are, there is a place, this is what math is. Mm -hmm. You're asking them to interpret the math in their own individual ways, which is amazing and mind blowing. And also empowering kids and their grownups to talk about math. So let me ask you this. What do you all want parents to know about this series and particularly these stories as they pick them up to share them with kids? Well, for me, uh, what I hope is that these books are kind of a way that they can model how to talk about math in their everyday lives. Because, you know, um, here, like I said, in New England, uh, lots of families go pick apples. Lots of families have kids that play in the snow. Um, And these books are just one example of how they could talk about math in these everyday occurrences. And hopefully that kind of pushes them to talk about these concepts in other things as well. You know, there's so many ways that you can talk about math. And I'm hoping that these books show parents the that to open their mind the way that they open my mind to how you can speak about math to your kids. And then at the end of each book, we've got this wonderful math note from an expert math person. And activities, like really simple activities that kids can do with their parents or grown, grown-ups, like with everyday objects. Like, like Grace said, you know, they're just playing and like you can take turns describing an object, you know, like an apple or a toy and, and talking about like, well, how are these two apples similar and different? And you're getting language, you're getting math. It's some really... I think the other thing too that I love is the storytelling math team at one, t- at one time said to my sales and marketing team, we're taking this scary out of math, right? Math is often an intimidating subject for both kids and their grownups. And if your grownup is already nervous about something, it makes it really hard to talk about it and then try to teach that kid that you're interacting with that's in Mm -hmm. your lap for that lap read. And I think what storytelling math does so beautifully is it empowers a reader and listener, because these these are for toddlers, at any developmental level to be able to reconnect with the math, to realize it's part of their everyday skill set, and that they're empowered to talk about it and learn from it and have their own kind of conversation. So one of the things that's kind of a Charles Bridge hallmark is that we want things to be factually accurate. Alyssa, how'd we do that with storytelling math? All right, well, so I mentioned Marlene Kleiman, our, our math expert at Turk, and she is just a phenomenal thinker. So she puts so much thought and care into the math 
in these books. So for instance, in Our Favorite Apples, she, she started off by asking, okay, well, how, how much weight can an average four-year-old safely carry? And then, okay, well, so how much does an average apple weigh? And therefore, how many apples can a kid carry? And so all of that thinking is in there, but it's just shown so simply and beautifully in the art. So Marlene was problem solving for us before we even right. asked to write a book about problem solving. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Right. And then, oh, and who jumps more? Um, we're talking about unit length, right? The jump, jump size. And so we've got big jumps and little jumps, but it's also about proportion and ratios. And so Marlene and Grace were talking and they're like, okay, well, um, what if the big jumps were twice as long as the little jumps? And so in every piece of the art, we had Grace, you know, really made it very clear that there are two little jumps for every big jump and the ratio is two to one, but we never say that in the text. That's all conveyed visually. The thing is, the truth is people see as a board book and there's only like six, seven pages. They think like, oh, you should do it so fast. It's so easy. But no, we really think about it and we really care about every little detail that goes in this yeah. book. I mean, there's so few words in these books, but Marlene and I and you and Alyssa, I mean, we spent hours and hours and hours just like trying to make sure it's accurate as well as child friendly, as well as flows and makes a good story. I mean, it's it looks it, it's supposed to look easy and it's supposed to look effortless, but it is not. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I would love to mention is that I feel so strongly that these books are for the very youngest readers um, and that. Uh, ties into my own um, ideas about diversity, because I think historically there's been a lot of people of marginalized groups who do not feel like math is for them, you know, like mm -hmm. that, that math is not what uh, a girl does, you know, like math is not, maybe math is not what a black person does, you know, like, and um, I'm hoping with these books that we plant the seeds that math is for for any gender, any any race that you are. That's why I feel really good about these books being for really young readers. I love that. I love that. And I also think as we started to look at storytelling math just as a concept, we were shocked by how few titles for zero to three year olds for the littlest readers, Grace, for the littlest listeners, weren't either primarily white with characters or primarily animals, right? These were mm -hmm. the two. Those were the two main things that we're fulfilling that particular self space. And so you're filling this void and you're filling this hole with a universal message. And I think you make a really great point and a really great connection that I think one of the things about math that people are so scared of is there's always that quote unquote right answer, right? And with these and with social emotional components to it, there is this, I don't wanna call it a gray area, but there are multiple ways to get to an answer, right? And those are the things that you teach within these books. It's the mathematical concept, but also this social emotional component to getting to that answer, whatever it is. Grace and Alyssa, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about the two newest adventures in the Storytelling Math Board Book series. For those of, those of you that are listening out there, please, please, please don't hesitate to check out charlesbridge.com slash storytellingmath to see even more resources about the series. And please come September 19th, check out our new releases. <laughs> <laughs>